What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory. This is episode number 57 and today we are returning with our first ever Cup Final as we take on Manchester City at Wembley in the FA Cup Final. Yeah, three of the previous four years reached the last 16 before being knocked out but now we've managed to overcome that hurdle. We got to the quarters, we then beat the Magpies, we got to the semis, we then beat Wolves and now... The toughest test of them all, Guardiola's Manchester City. So just before the game, I want to show you this. Obviously, in the last episode, we ended the Premier League season by finishing in third place and going into the Champions League for next season. Unfortunately, I've been talking about this all season long, as you and Plant is going into the season. Anyways, I know um, I've been talking about this all season long. A golden generation of Cork City Youth Academy graduates are about to be lost. I'm gutted. As you can see, three of the four players here, Malloy, Donnelly, and uh, McGarry, which is a brilliant name, Barry McGarry. Uh, unfortunately, they, they're all unsettled, and I can't keep them, unfortunately, because I can't promote them to the senior team, and I can't release anyone from um, the, uh, the senior team either. I've already released a maximum two players you can release Per season. I'm devastated. A golden generation of Cork City players are walking out of the academy. Gutted. Um, still, as we're about to dive into the game, let's just get straight to it. It's, of course, a live episode uh, today. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, um, that's uh, Connell. Uh, of course, we play on ultimate difficulty. And for those that have been asking throughout the course of this series about the sliders, they're all untouched and all on 50. There have been some times where I've had a bigger game and I've adjusted them to put the CPU a bit of an advantage because as we know sometimes it can be a bit easier to beat the big teams. Sometimes you struggle against the uh, the um, the teams that are out of form and down the bottom of the table. But for the most part it's been on 50 practically throughout the entire save so far. And I think it's been a pretty sort of um, good rate of progression if you know what I mean based on difficulty as well as ability of our team as well. So heading into the game obviously I'll play in Tumba as he is our cup goalkeeper and do I play Luke Byrne? Because I love Keating at right back, but normally what we do for most of our games is have Keating on the bench and play Rory at right back. He's actually better as a right back than a holding mid and have Byrne and Keenan together. Mm, even though we've got a lower rating, I prefer this lineup, to be honest. And yeah, I don't feel the need to make any more changes. Let's get Maguire off the bench though. Don't need him there. And bring on, who should we put on the bench here? Dugan? Hegarty, McWilliams we barely see nowadays. Let's put on... Let's put on... Gavin Kilkenny. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. I'm probably not going to bring anyone off the bench anyway. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a live episode today. And, um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Please make some noise if you welcome the two teams to the pitch. I'm oddly calm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the best way of putting it. I'm oddly calm right now. It's interesting because we drew the last two seasons, our first two years in the Premier League, we drew at the Etihad Stadium in both our reverse fixtures against Guardiola's side, but I believe we lost both games at home. So this one, the first time we faced them at a neutral venue, it's going to be very interesting indeed to see who comes out on top. But again, despite, despite the fact we've got the weaker team, I do feel, again, like a strange sense of confidence here based on the league form of both teams this season. Oh, awful first touch. Yeah, I, I feel I feel confident. If I if I if I'm in attack mode here, and go for early chances, I can see an early goal. Talked about it many times. I do believe it's the best philosophy. You know, when even when you are a weaker team. Oh, yeah. Be aggressive from the first minute and don't sit back and try and score goals on the counter. He says six minutes in, going a goal down. Jesus with the goal, he was the top scorer and the golden boot winner and the player of the Premier League the season before this one. He's lost his crown, he's lost his golden boot, but he's fired City into the lead. He just splits Pelletier and Yates with a drag back. They are so common in this year's FIFA on Ultimate with competitive mode on and it's so hard to get the ball off them when they do it. Jesus with the goal, the Brazilian with the finish, City lead, worst possible start. Yeah, that's a good tackle, Luke. Well done. Away we go. 
Away we go. Healy, Cunningham, come on. You and Bellwell got pace. Make the right run, Sam. Make the right run. That's a great ball. Ooh. Oh, Edison, what a save. What a save. Stretches the right arm out. Parrot. Troy blocked and City don't clear. Yes! Lou Burn getting the start and getting us back on level terms. What a beginning to the game. 15 minutes in, 1 1. Come on, Cork. Approaching half an hour on the clock. Still 1 1. Fabian's corner is a good one, but Leo's always going to win that aerial draw as it drops to Ricky. And now Jao Cancelo looking for space. Back to Ferran Torres. And as Sharky jockeys, can't get it back off him. And Man City's so good at keeping hold of the ball. As that ball finds Jesus, 2 1. Just gets a step ahead of Pelletier and smacks it past in Timber at the near post. I thought this might be an individual duel of Jesus versus Bell Bell. But at the moment, the Brazilian has scored two. And the Cameroonians yet to get off the mark. 2 1, City back in front. It's so hard to put a tackle in in this year's FIFA against the AI. I've mentioned it many times before because the stand tackles seem severely underpowered and oftentimes the ball just ricochets right back to the opponent's feet or you commit a silly little lunging foul. You, you have more of a chance of making a tackle by just standing in the right area and hoping that the... Oh, Edison's going to get that opposition attacker runs into you. You've got more of a chance of being successful that way, but 2-1 and I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated but I'm not feeling defeatist or down and out because based on the way this game has gone there's going to be plenty more chances for plenty more goals. There's Byrne who scored hours, finds Troy and Cancelo deflects it into the path for Cunningham. Now Bell Bell to drag back. Needs a teammate. He's got Parrot with him. And now Cunningham and Keenan Oh, and Edison again! Edison again! Was that all pass back? Edison again! Two brilliant saves in a Brazilian. And it's the South Americans that are turn up for Man City today on both ends of the pitch. And this end to end sequence continues. Oh! Go, oh, Edison again! What a first half from the number 31. I've beaten him once. But I don't think I'll beat him again based on this performance. He's on fire. Go on, GP up. You get some well done. And now Keenan to Cunningham. Through to Parrot. Oh, I could have rolled that through there. But that's better. Sharky, your cross is so good. That's a teasing delivery. Oh! The kid from Cameroon. So good. They named him twice. Samuel Bell Bell connecting with a club captain Barry Sharkey Cross. What a ball from the number three. Bell Bell. Oh, leaping like a salmon. And what a first half at Wembley. Please tell me I've set my microphone up correctly. <laughs> what a header. Edison beaten four goals in 45 minutes and right before the break we're back on level terms. Come on! That's interesting Man City have got a Champions League final to play into Milan in a week's time. There's Ferran Torres. Oh and Tumba great save. Oh Jesus missed it! And Tumba what a save! And the Frenchman keeps us level. And then Jesus, of all the players, has just blew his chance at a hat-trick. I might have not seen that correctly. That the, the ball might have been behind him. Hence why he didn't make clean connection. But initially, it looked as though he just miscued his jump. And his header. Wow. What, what a let-off. And what a save by Ntumba. I don't see this game going extra time. I really don't. I think someone is going to win this. But really... Oh no, Keenan should have gone the other way. It could go either way at this rate. Para. Tackle by Jao Cancelo. And Man City clear. This really could go either way. There's Cunningham. It's got space to bend one. Shot blocked. And Parrot keeps the chance alive. Bell Bell offloads. Cunningham. Again looking for space. And again just can't get a clean shot away. Yeah, I think someone's going to win this in the dying stages, but it could go either way. So tense. Right, I'm going to make a sub here. Burn scored our first goal, but now he's getting tired. I'm going to bring on Keating, and I'm going to change 
the position for the vines. Now they play holding mid alongside Keenan. They have more energy. I think that's what we need really. More energy through the middle of the park for the final 10 minutes. And also if we are to play extra time as well. So Luke grabbed our first. Now he's making way. I tell you what man. This is so tense. I can see someone winning this. But I keep saying it. It could be either team. Who is going to break hearts and celebrate the winner? Five minutes of normal time remain. Xerxy off the bench. Tackled by Rory Devine. And Keenan plays it through to Healy. And I've got Keating off the bench down the right with fresh legs and energy. And I see someone at the back stick. <gasps> see the ball hit the back of the net but bow bow no what a moment what a final Keating what a ball and the celebration animation happened literally as the ball crossed the line but the kid from Cameroon who's just won Cork City their first ever cup. Get in! Okay, 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 everyone just calm down because we've still got two minutes of normal time to play and we know how common late goals are in this FIFA. We've seen it all throughout the season and the series. So it's not over yet. Keenan, so, so good. Lo Celso, Xerxy. Two minutes of stoppage time to hold on. Just don't overcommit. Forced him to find an opening. Leo! Leo again! Rev, yes! What a final! Oh, incredible! That's one of the best cup finals I've played in this year's FIFA. What a final! Twice we battled back from a Gabriel Jesus goal to level it. And then at the death. Samuel Bell Bell wins it. First ever cup final. Cork City win a five goal thriller. That was incredible. What a game that was, man. That was unbelievable. Oh my word, that was incredible. I'm out of breath. Well, we've been waiting for this moment since the series began. Our sixth season. And what a way to end it. As club captain... Biggest club legend Barry Sharkey lifts the FA Cup for Cork City. Absolutely buzzing. I love the fact that uh, the guy next to him is Keenan, who of course we temporarily, I say temporarily, gave the captain to uh, back in Season 4 before replacing it with Barry Sharkey. Is it Season 3 or Season 4? One of the two. But that is so cool. Oh, mate, I'm absolutely buzzing. Like, literally buzzing. Because that is an incredible cup final. And, it, you know, honestly, like, I, I say this so often. But, like, I, I know it sounds crazy. But I don't actually mind too much when I lose a thriller like this. Um, it's the sort of, like, the, the kind of boring 1-0s with a scrappy goal. That, you know, it's just, it's just not quite as fun. But this was incredible, man. And I've said it many times throughout the save. There's something about this Cork City team that is so resilient. The amount of points we picked up from losing positions throughout the course of this save in our league games is unbelievable. The amount of comeback victories we've had has, has been plentiful. And then in the biggest stage, in the biggest game of the series, how fitting it is, it's a comeback victory for our first ever cup. That's so fitting and so appropriate for how this series has gone. And the goals as well. Luke Byrne getting the start, scoring our first. Sharky with the assist for Bell Bell for our second. And then Samuel winning it for us at the death. And I said it might be Jesus' first Bell Bell today. And indeed it was. And the kid from Cameroon, whilst he might not have scored more goals, sees his team come out on top. And no doubt about it, we deserved it. We were the better team. City had more of the ball, but I thought we were more attack-minded today. It was a great game though, so, so fun. And of course, no surprises for man of the match. Man, oh man, Sharky might be the club legend, but there's no doubt this guy was the most influential. The kid from Cameroon, so good they named him twice. Samuel Bell Bell's brace gives Cork City their first ever major honour. Mate, I'm absolutely gleaming. I'm just buzzing right now. Come on, you boys in green.
Oh, I love that interview answer there. This is just the start. We're going for more trophies. You best believe it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. So as you look at the tournament prize money, you get £4 million for that. Also, you've got that over £100 million for our incredible league finish. Um, and because we're going to the Champions League next year, you know, I, I do believe that as we leave 11 and a half mil in the budget anyway, um, we should be able to get, uh, there we are, 173.5 mil for our third place finish. We should be able to get a big budget next season. Now, I don't want to go away from our philosophy, where, of course, in this series, the only players we've signed that have not been Irish are uh, players on free transfers, like Samuel Belbert, of course. But I, I want to make sure that if we do bring a player in next season on a permanent transfer, he, he remains Irish. Ida and Obafemi are the two names left I'm really desperate for. I don't think Jack Byrne now would be too good of a signing for us at 30 years old and 76 rated. But whatever the future holds for our transfers, one thing's for sure, this current crop of players will remain a unified squad. I'm, I'm so buzzing, man. What a way to end such a great season. So uh, what we will do uh, to end the season off is we will... Um, I love that Cork City's stuck in a rut. Next thing you see is us with the FA Cup sat on the little uh, the little table there. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll develop when you have FA Cup player of the tournament then, or is that going down to the Premier League? That must be FA Cup as well as the Premier League. Not that it really matters, of course. That's interesting. I wonder who. Yeah, I wonder who what uh, who was the top scorer in the FA Cup? Was it was it Bell Bell in that competition as well? It was indeed pure goal scorer, baby. He's going to set the Champions League alight next season. I can't wait. So what we'll do, sorry, what we'll do is we'll get through to the end of the season officially. We'll run through the squad together and uh, who won what, uh, the European Cups, uh, the Carabao Cup and also uh, the other leagues as well. So the first of the month we'll see we have unfortunately seen... These three guys turned at their contracts. Donnelly, McGarry, and also Malloy as well. So there's just a one man left in there. Good old Finn. He's not abandoning us just yet. And uh, the last of the golden generation remains. But will he stay here for next season? Well, we should find out. Um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll find out the winners then of the um, of the Carabao Cup. And also the Europa League and the Champions League as well. So Manchester United won the Carabao Cup this year. Beating Spurs on penalties. As for the Europa League, that was won this year by... Oh, a very interesting Italian final there is Fiorentina beat AC Milan uh, to be crowned champions. That's two years in a row Milan have got to first the Champions League and then the Europa League final but unfortunately finished runners up. And as for the Champions League, well, their Milan rivals Inter were crowned champions. What a bad week for Guardiola, losing the FA Cup final to us and the Champions League to Inter Milan. So let's do the other leagues together and uh, as I always say, take this with a pinch of salt because as we know they do change uh, when you save and, and reload the save. Uh, for your new season. So, well, this should be Sheffield United and Brentford going up together, though, of course, that might well change. A Bristol, Bournemouth, Blackburn, and Stoke going into the playoffs. As for League One, that was Preston North End and Luton Town going up, with the playoffs being Salford, Ipswich, Portsmouth, and Blackpool as well. That'll be interesting. Salford going to the Championship, but they managed to get through the playoffs there. And as for League Two, Rochdale, Northampton, and Colchester were magically promoted. Swindon, Shrewsbury, Scunthorpe, and Charlton Athletic going into the playoffs for League 2. As for League 1, PSG won that, didn't even need to wait, we know it's always PSG, I've only seen them lose out on the title once in all the times I've gone to the other leagues. As for, whoopsie daisy, that's the, uh, the Bundesliga, uh, RB Leipzig won it back to back, interesting, it seems like Bayern Munich's dominance in German football might be coming to an end, at least in this save. As for the Serie A, that was won by Inter Milan as they complete a league and European double and we'll do a couple more here. We'll go with the Ered V's, where PSV beat Ajax by four points to lift the trophy there. We'll also do the Portuguese League, where it was Sporting Lisbon coming out on top this year with Porto in uh, second and Benfica in third. As for the uh, the Irish League is, is never finished midway through the season. This is how it's looking for those that are interested. Obviously, you've got Harrogate Town in uh, the League of Ireland. And interestingly enough, I remember the first time I showed the table, they were like top. And now they're bottom. How crazy is that? All change in Ireland. But as for the Scottish Premier League, uh, Celtic won it once again. Five points clear of Rangers as they are champions of Scotland. And as for La Liga, Atletico Madrid. Whoa, they were 12 points clear of Barcelona. My goodness, fair play to Simeone's side there with Real Madrid finishing in third place. And I'll do one more. We'll do the Turkish League. Where are we here? The Turkish Super League. That was won by Bazak Shahir, interestingly enough, this season. 
Cool. Um, so what we'll do is we'll run through the score together one final time this season and we'll end what has been our best season of the say with absolutely no question right there. Now we'll also see if potentially we've become a five-star team. I don't think we have. Um, so, yep, as we run through the squad this season, Bazunu is one rating away from hitting 80. Hopefully he will do it next season. Barry Sharkey. Oh, mate, growing three ratings to 88 overall. God, I love this shark, baby. I just, I can't get enough of this guy. I know you guys can't as well. Honestly, man, I'm so glad you guys kept saying, make him captain. You know, when I gave it to Rory Keenan, look, we love Keenan, man. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, you guys are right, man. Sharky deserved a captain's armband initially, and I'm so glad we've managed to correct that. Uh, Leo only scored the one goal all season long. He grew a rating to 86 overall. I still believe he'll hit 90 at some point, but look at his physical stats, man. This guy's an absolute tank loving the pieces leo leo but um yeah a little bit of slow progression this year from leo bowden's up to 79 overall the gp is now our starting center off alongside leo though he's also an absolutely physical beast in this team so he's up to 79 rated at just 19 years old keating grew a rating to 78 but as we know now uh, normally rory plays at right back with luke burn uh through the middle so divine grew three ratings to 85 overall this year keenan got to 90 overall for the first player in the team to do it this year and he also got an extra rating to 91 overall and this is why I rejected that big bid from Real Madrid at the start of last season. He's worth more than what the Galacticos put in for him and he's only 22 years old. I've been disappointed with Burns' development. You know, as we know, when he came out of the academy, he had the highest potential we'd seen at 90 to 94. He then lost the potential to be special tag. I still believe it's an exciting prospect. It is indeed. And his growth is really slow, which is such a shame. He's only 73 overall. Hopefully, he'll kick on a bit next season. Uh, Malumbi didn't play much this season. It's coming in from Brighton. Uh, who else can I show you? Hegarty has got the potential to, uh, to be special. Hoping to use him a bit more next season. Eamon Cunningham, though, 13 goals and 12 assists. Once again, just so good with both um, in this team. Growing two ratings to 88 overall. I think next season, Eamon will become a 90-rated attacking midfielder. And as we get to the wingers, Troy Parrott completed a position change this year. And what a great second season he had. I'll be honest, in his first season disappointing only four goals all season long and yes he had that two month injury but wasn't the best but this year officially became an inside forward on the left grew two ratings to 83 overall and scored 12 goals with eight assists and look at the fa cup as well four in five and an assist as well parrot this season was definitely our most improved player healy by the way is really kicking on he's growing four ratings to 83 overall we had a good crop of uh, youngsters at the academy on the wingers uh, position and i identified healy as the best of the lot so Certainly made the right choice there. Up to 83 overall. Still has potential to be special. And again, he's he's got pace now. He's got really good pace. So really happy with the decision to make him our uh, our out and out best youth academy winger. Um, Ruse got a rating. He has potential to be special as we know. And as for the main man, Samuel Bell Bell, 87 overall. Yes, we kind of I say we I kind of choked after the great start for Bell Bell. He was on course to get to that 40 goal season. In the end, I couldn't even get him 30. But he won the Golden Boot. He won the assist title, and let's be honest here, he won us the FA Cup as well. Yep, even though he might have fallen 11 short of Ivan Tony's 40, you can't detract from what an amazing season this was from Samuel Bell Bell. Oh, you got to love the kid from Cameroon. And as for Aaron Connolly, he only scored one goal all season long. And as we know, Plant, the Plant, I want to show this one final time, submitted the transfer request. Oh, Ewan, I'm sorry, bro, you're just not cut out for this level. It's time to go back to league. Two. So we'll end with the squad then. We'll end with the squad. Um, I really think next season, like even though we'll probably get quite a big budget, I'm anticipating around 60 to 70 million for going into the Champions League. I don't even know who I'm going to sign, if anyone, because I love the teams it is. I love the fact it's continuously growing every single month. And I just love the squad we've got. So I don't even know if we'll make any signings in the summer, even with a massive budget. Maybe for no reason whatsoever, I'll just improve my global transfer network. But it's an incredible squad. I do want to try and sell some more of these fringe players that have very little potential whatsoever. So I can get some more space for any uh, potential Youth Academy grads coming through. But either way, I love this Cork City team. We finally won our first piece of silverware. And I'm absolutely buzzing.
And we're still a four and a half star team. But I won't take this a quarter glory though, guys. So a big thank you for watching the season finale and season six as a whole. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. What a way to bow out our best season to save. Finishing in third place, qualifying for the Champions League and winning the FA Cup in an absolute five goal thriller. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the brand new season as we begin our seventh season at Turner's Cross and our first in the Champions League as well. Very soon. What a final. That was incredible.